But I want to preface that by, uh, say, uh, by talking about uh, the kind of cultural uh, differences uh, I notice uh, as somebody who has been away from India for a long time and uh, you know, come back uh, to a country where, uh, which has caught up in many ways with many of the modern tools of communication. Um, the minister referred to uh, Facebook, Twitter, internet, and so on. Uh, it's a great leveler. Uh, but I want to go back to the time I uh, left India to go to the U.S. Uh, and my first experience of public communication in the U.S. and the kind of culture shock I got. So this was, I think, within uh, maybe a few weeks after I had settled down. Um, there was a commerce uh, secretary in the U.S. named uh, uh, Ron Brown who was visiting India. Uh, I think it was March of 1995. Uh, and I called his office, not knowing at the time, it was very early weeks, that every office, every uh, cabinet uh, official in the U.S. has a press wing, has a press officer, and a very elaborate uh, press office. Uh, I straight called his uh, office and said, I believe uh, Mr. Brown is going to India, uh, and I'm trying to get uh, a readout on that, and one. And two, I believe he's taking a bunch of uh, Indian-American officials with him uh, so I'd like to uh, know who they are. Um, this was the, all, by the way, this was all the pre-email, pre-internet, right? It was er very early days yet. Uh, and I asked, this, I asked them this question af after having tried with the Indian embassy for a long time to get the same details, and they were very guarded. Uh, and they wouldn't tell me, they wouldn't even confirm that there was a trip on, much less give me the names. When I called Ron Brown's office after I you know, preface my remark and introduction, their first response was, what's your fax number? I said, uh, why? They said, oh, we want to fax you the list. You asked for a list, right? You, you want to know who's going with him? We are faxing you the list. This was a total shock for me, simply because I came from a culture where I don't know how much of it has changed, but Generally, the media is treated as an adversary. Most public communication officials in India I've met try and protect information, right? You want to keep information away from the media rather than dispensing uh, information and giving out. And that was the first striking uh, you know, memory I have of a, a society which is open, transparent, where communicators are eager to tell you, eager to give, eager to give you a story. Doesn't always happen. I mean, it's not the U.S. system is perfect or the European or Western systems are perfect. Uh, we'll come to that later. But it's a very uh, strong memory for me about how. Uh, from uh, and I'd moved from Delhi, uh, from Bombay, but I'd worked in Delhi, and I'd covered the Ministry of External Affairs, uh, the Prime Minister's office, and so on, where information was always difficult to get. You had to cultivate an officer for a long time, a source for a long time. Uh, I used to go to uh, what was then called, uh, I think it's still called PIB, and you sat around for a long time, and you know it, it took a while to develop that relationship. But as I you go to a culture where you know everything is out there. And this was the early days of the internet. It got better and better. Of course, a lot of things have changed. We'll come, come to that. But I want to segue this into uh, the story of why, because of our cultural differences and, and the way our national ethos, uh, you know, uh, sort of is predicated on being too communicative but not imparting enough information, right? I was sitting there uh, watching uh, th this whole process, you know, it, it was wonderful, the in introductions were really nice, it was really sweet, but this would never happen in America. I I'll tell you, as a, as a very similar workshop, you know how it would work? A bunch of people would get around, uh, nobody makes any introductions because they're already printed out, everyone knows who's speaking and what their background is, their, you know, resume, biodata, everything. Forget the flowers, nobody ever gives any flowers. Uh, there and they all have a brown paper bag lunch and everything that you've done throughout the day will be done in two hours or less. End of story, go home. Uh, so 
our entire culture is too elaborate, too much protocol, too many speeches, too much. So it's a very business-like uh, atmosphere, business-like uh, approach in the US, sometimes uh, too, uh, too cut and dried. But it was remarkable, and one of the reasons I've always felt, uh, you know, uh, many of those countries, their public communication is superb, is because they, they cut straight to the bone. There are no frills, no flowers, no frills, no long speeches. Uh, and more recently, when I look back and, uh, you know, read about how we are struggling to go up in this whole uh, 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 ease of doing business, uh, that boils down to, to me, uh, you know, our national culture of, you know, too many frills. Um, I'm sorry, I just lost my notes. Okay, here we are. So, uh, too much protocol, too much ritual, uh, and some of it is uh, so elaborate that uh, we uh, waste a lot of time. Uh, like the minister said, Manish uh, mentioned about old paradigms and uh, you know fighting the you know 21st century battles with 18th century tools. In many ways, we also have 18th century uh, uh, mindsets, uh, and to me, that is one of the important uh, you know changes that has to happen. Uh, it's not just technology; it's not enough to have you know uh, Twitter and Facebook. It's it's the way uh, you use those tools. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, are, you know, social media. I, I was told this whole uh, event is being live cast and, you know, there's web streaming and all that, which is fantastic. But the question I asked for my uh, friend and colleague uh, Vishu was, uh, how many people are receiving it? Uh, because you, you can webcast all you want, but if nobody is watching it, the point is completely lost. Uh, the entire exercise uh, is futile. And I was very curious about what kind of interactivity there is. Uh, you know, at the receiving end, and a lot of that has to go with, you know, bandwidth and, you know, whether uh, the, uh, the technology uh, at the receiving end uh, is good enough, and whether the word has gone out, whether there's been enough advanced publicity. Uh, one of the most fascinating things I found after I uh, went to the U.S. Uh, was, you know, how, like I said, every uh, cabinet official, uh, what they call, uh, what we call ministers, has a really elaborate press uh, uh, setup, uh, and they work very closely with the media. And uh, the big shock I got was, whereas I went from a society where uh, a system where the media is treated as an adversary, there it's a constant communication. They engage you. Their constant endeavor is to sell the story of the department, like Ron Brown's office. I later on subsequently discovered that you know Brown had his own you know uh, press team, as did everybody else, and they engaged you constantly, and I also went at a time where this whole, uh, you know, internet, email, you know, it got better and better, bandwidth and speeds got better. So today, it doesn't matter where I am in the world, uh, you know, I get communications from uh, every beat that I cover, mainly, you know, defense, White House, State Department, and you know at all times what is happening. Uh, I mean, even this morning, you know, there's something going on. Uh, they are on the phone. They are, you know, the constant stream of email, and for 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 us, I think transparency uh, is still we are still battling with issues of tr uh, transparency, and there is still no concept of, uh, of selling a good story. I see any number of wonderful stories. The 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 duty of a pub, uh, information officer is not necessarily just to sell. Uh, you know, a good story, uh, you know, sometimes you also have to deflect back stories and a lot of, you know, techniques. And many, many times I, 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 f I learned that in the U.S., um, the public communicators were attached to various departments. They have various tools. And once you engage a beat reporter or a journalist over a period of time, you're actually able to manipulate him too. And so it's a constant battle. Um, in more recent times, I want to uh, f uh, fast forward uh, to today's technology. Um, we were talking, uh, uh, Manish made some bunch of excellent points about uh, the media, you know, in the U.S., how, I mean, in India, how uh, television, for instance, has an exaggerated uh, influence here. 
And I really agree with that because uh, I've always felt, uh, particularly English media, is fairly marginal um, in India. I think we uh, tend to think, because it, it occupies a big mind space, but it's really, uh, you know, the regional languages which are far more powerful. I've always felt, you know, the regional language uh, television channels are far more powerful. But now, you've actually arrived at a situation where the media itself is marginal. I really feel that, and I speak, uh, speak of this as a media person. Uh, to me, the two, you, the two biggest media uh, sort of empires right now in the world, in, in the area that I cover, one is Narendra Modi, the other is Donald Trump. I mean, they are the media, if you really look at it. You know, the number of people who follow them, uh, big news stories are actually broken directly by the leaders now, right? Uh, I remember uh, uh, when Modi was flying back, uh, you know, and, uh, from Kabul and stopping over in Lahore, that, that was his direct tweet which everybody else caught on to, okay? And every media person of consequence today follows Donald Trump because he has this habit of, you know, breaking news. So increasingly, it poses a challenge. What happens if your minister or your chief minister or your boss uh, breaks news? Where does that leave you and what is your job? And then, you know, how, uh, how prevalent are you? How, uh, you know, uh, where are you in terms of uh, social media space? Are you there and are you supposed to be there? Uh, because many times you find, you know, the, the, old, the old style of, you know, issuing press releases or press notes is fading. And a lot of that now also has to do with speed and response. Uh, you know, it's, it's not enough. In the old days, like I said, the news cycle was predictable. Now it's 24-7. Um, so as information officers, you have to be, you know, on the ball all the time. And sometimes it's hard. It's impossible. Even journalists find it impossible to be... Uh, you know, on the ball all the time. Uh, the, the technologies are changing so rapidly now that now it's, it's not just, uh, you know, Twitter or Facebook, Instagram. There are in, incredible changes are happening by uh, the week, actually. And I don't know how, you know, how prepared, uh, you know, government office, the government officers or government offices are to take this on. And I don't even know whether these hierarchies will remain. Uh, I get a sense, because we, like Munir said, we are also a hierarchy conscious society. Um, so what do you do? How do you approach, uh, uh, you know, putting news out there, I interacting with reporters, and not even just reporters. Now you have the ability to interact with uh, the whole constituency, with the whole state. I mean, a chief minister can literally, or a prime minister can l literally reach out to the whole country. So these are important challenges, and I think you have to get your head around not just the technology, but also the culture. Uh, to me, our culture is one of being reserved, of you know, hierarchy, of not imparting information uh, easily. Uh, and every time I come, I struggle. Uh, I mean, many times when I think of coming back and working in India, I struggle with the thought of whether I fit easily into a culture uh, where you know, interface with the uh, government is so difficult. Um, I leave it at this, but in, a, in the Q&A, I would, uh, you know, be happy to, you know, answer any questions about cultural differences because to me, no matter what the technology, uh, you know, new technology, we, because right now we are pretty much on par with the rest of the world in terms of, I mean, except for the bandwidth issue, but all the technologies that are available everywhere in the world to impart information and communications available in India too. Uh, and communication itself has become uh, a sort of worldwide exercise. You, a, a tweet that you can send out from a district headquarters uh, can be seen you know, across the world. But the difficulty I find is whether we are able to change culturally, whether our national ethos can change, you know, our ethos which is too form bound, which is too protocol bound, which is too, uh, you know, ritualistic, uh, whether that can change. And unless that changes and you learn to engage directly, sharply, transparently, quickly uh, with reporters or with other constants to whom you have to put out the message, 
unless you master that, uh, you know, all the technologies is not going to help us. Kalinga Institute of Social Sciences KISS, world's largest residential institute and home for 25,000 tribal children, including 15,000 girls, educating from KG to PG, a unique initiative for social transformation.